A few people have commented on my show looking for this drink, but one of you, Ben Bentley, have made it a goddamn obsession. So this is Sex on the Beach for you, you son of a bitch. So there's like a couple different versions of this drink and a couple different versions of its origin. I'm talking about sex on the beach. Who knows exactly where this drink comes from? Supposedly a young bartender by the name of Ted down at Confetti's Bar, which I think is in the Panhandle of Florida, it's either in Destin or Panama Beach, uh, came up with this drink by mixing up peach schnapps and cranberry and vodka and was serving it at the bar and somebody asked him, hey man, what's it called? And he said uh, quickly on the spot, thinking to himself, why do people come down to Florida for, 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 for uh, spring break? Well, for sex on the beach, it's the sex on the beach. That's a cute story, that's probably not true. It does show up as a recipe in the 1982 American Bartender School book, which kind of predates the Teddy Confetti story. So I don't know who invented this drink. I think what's weird is that there is an IBA version of it, which closely mirrors the Teddy Confetti story, and also a Mr. Boston version of it, which seems to bear no relation to it. So we're just gonna make both. I think the Teddy Confetti version, it's just fun to say, is probably the one that is served more often, but having never ordered one or drank one, I honestly wouldn't know. So I'm just gonna make both and we'll see which one is good and which one is bad. We're going to make the IBA version first and then the Mr. Boston version and then we're gonna drink them off head to head. Drink them off. I'm gonna mix this up in a, a cobbler shaker. Uh, this is called a cobbler shaker it's, or a three-phase shaker or a Japanese shaker because they are popular with Japanese bartenders. I'm using this one today because I never have on the show before and I felt like, why not? Fun things. Fun things are happening, everybody. I almost sounded a little bit like Joan Cusack there, didn't I? So we need one ounce of orange juice. And I use the fresh squeezed orange juice because I can. Um, use what you like. So already we are making probably a better sex on the beach than uh, you've ever drank. I wouldn't say than you've ever had because this is just a drink. But like sex on the beach is actually kind of overrated. It's very sandy. Like seagulls come after you and shit. We need one ounce of cranberry juice and I'm using 100% cranberry ocean spray. Not the cocktail, not the cranberry cocktail. 100% cranberry juice from Ocean Spray. Mm, perfect. We need a half an ounce of peach schnapps. Um, and I'm using Orchard Peach. We need um, like an ounce to an ounce and a half of vodka. Um, I'm gonna go with an ounce. This is a relatively light drink here. We're gonna shake that up and put it into a hurricane glass. All right, I wanna pour this drink over cracked ice. And look at all this cracked ice I have here, it's great. Uh, with these, you kind of want to keep them moving while you pour because they tend to clog. Oh, shit. There we have a sex on the beach. Ah, what do we garnish that sucker with? I'm going to garnish that with a orange wedge, sort of. I don't know what the heck I'm making here. Sure, I don't work. What the heck? Put that on there. Yeah, it looks great. And uh, how about one of these? We're going to give this drink an umbrella. Put a straw in it, and here we have the IBA version of a sex on the beach. Ooh, what a great name. Peachy, 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 peachy. Peach, 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 peach! That's it! The entire tasting note is peach. I, maybe the faintest hint of orange. Uh, so all you taste is peach, and I think I think that's the idea. <laughs> this drink is sort of a mashup of a fuzzy navel and a Cape Cotter with the cranberry and the peach and the vodka and the orange. It's not bad. I would not say it's, it's not cloyingly sweet or anything like that. It's actually, it's a pretty easy sipper. I've never had one before. 
So first timer club here. I, I, it's just not my jam, honestly. It might be your jam. I know it's your jam, Ben. I know it's your jam. I know it's your jam so bad. You just need it, Ben. You need it. Here it is. It's all for you, Ben. It's all for you. So we're gonna make the Mr. Boston version now. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna need a second shaker. Okay, we need a quarter ounce of cranberry. Um, a half an ounce of pineapple. So a little extra got in there, that's all right. Somehow I feel like the balance of the drink doesn't matter. A half an ounce of Midori. Melon liqueur. Delectable, so green. I open it and you can immediately smell the meloniness of it. There's so few, I mean, it is a very useful cocktail ingredient because nothing tastes like it, nothing looks like it, you know? It is its own thing. We need a half an ounce of vodka. This bottle says absolute. I can't even promise you that there's absolute in there. It might be like Kirkland or Popovs or something like that. So we got the holy hand grenade here um, of Chambord. And I think I'm supposed to count to one, two, five, three, before I pour a half an ounce of this. Thou shalt count to three, the number being three, shall shall stop at three and not continue to count. So I have flown the biggest nerd flag I possibly can. I know I'm off on the quote, but you guys will appreciate it anyways. But let's shake that delicious cocktail and uh, throw it into another one of my heart cane glasses. Heart cane. Let's get some ice, one big old cube. I will say this, I really like these Barfly Japanese shakers. I'm not, um, these are not typically a shaker I would use, but so far they're doing the job that they're supposed to do really well. Um, they separate super easily. They hold together very well. All my barware is courtesy of Barfly. Check them out, they're in a pinned comment below this video. I think Barfly's got a really nice cobbler shaker in their lineup. Crack some ice into that glass, and we'll pour this sucker in there too. I just want to pause here to note that I'm doing hand cracked ice into these glasses because that's what I'm set up for. It's certainly not necessary, but honestly, in my case, anything else would require more work than what I just did. So that's what we're doing on how to drink. Blender ice, ice from an ice cube tray, whatever you got is fine. All right, this is Sex on the Beach, Mr. Boston style. And this has got raspberries in it, so I feel like this one, we're gonna garnish with some raspberries. I know it's a little overkill, but whatever. All right, Sex on the Beach, Boston style, Mr. Boston style. Right away, the color is more pleasing on the, the Teddy Confetti version. Let's try the Mr. Boston. It's not bad. Much more like a melted Jolly Rancher, to be honest. This version is l way less sweet, much more pro, um, honestly, this is a better version. This is like a melted Jolly Rancher, both of which will get you drunk without forcing you to taste alcohol that you must not want to taste if you're drinking these. Between the two, I would bet this will have the better hangover than this one. Um, I, I would, on the other hand, maybe this one, you know, you'd, you'd get sick because you wouldn't be able to have, you wouldn't be able to get drunk enough to have a hangover because of all the sugar, the syrup, the sugar. This is very sweet, is what I'm getting at. It's a very, very, very sweet drink. This one makes me a little bit nervous. Like if you drank too much of this, you might not feel too good. You get the raspberry a lot. What's weird about it is that that raspberry and melon combo do sort of conspire to create uh, almost an artificial approximation of the peach you get in the regular one. So maybe that's why there's two. It's possible that the Mr. Boston version evolved because it came from a market where peach schnapps wasn't available or something at the time. Cause this, it's in that vein. It's just getting there a very different way. I think the end result is much sweeter here than there. There's like a weird appleness to that too. This one gets a little appley from the Midori, I guess. I don't know, I'm not into it. Well, there it is, Ben Bentley. An episode just for you. You commenting, I mean, you. this guy, Ben, I'm speaking about you, so don't leave the room or anything, but like, this guy commented on, I'm pretty sure, every single one of my videos. 
saying he needed to see a sex on the beach. So hopefully this will get him off my back. Probably not. I'm probably just feeding the bears. He's just going to pick another goddamn drink and start spamming the shit out of that. But it's all engagement. So I win. I always win. The house always wins. We made sex on the beach. Do we made sex on the beach? Uh, the kids are down there on the beach making the sex. Ah, get the hoes again, Martha. Why? Leave them alone. They're young. They're having a nice time. I don't want to look at it. I'm trying to read the paper. <laughs>